Now I've got a fun little pattern for you today. I found it when flipping through favorite flies of the Gray Smoky Mountains, getting ready for my annual trip down there at the end of the month. The pattern is Mercer Swing Caddis, created by Mike Mercer, who I think is a Western tire, but the pattern does have a following now in the Appalachians. And one of the unique traits of this pattern is it's really got two hackle materials. It's got some CDC wrapped about midway, then some ice stub for a thorax, a bead, and then partridge in front of the bead. Now, how much does this thing really look like a caddis larva? I don't know, I'm thinking not very much, but you know with the CDC and the partridge, this thing is just gonna look alive in the water. And it's one of these patterns that could be fished, dead drifted, maybe under an indicator, or swung like a wet fly. But either way, it was a fun one to tie. So there it is in the vise, Mike Mercer's Swing Caddis. Probably the buggiest fly I've tied all year, but really kind of cool looking and not that hard to tie. Sizes for this thing are 12 to 16. This is a one extra long, standard weight, barbless nymph hook. Now I'm gonna use some uh, brown thread. That is a 2.4 millimeter tungsten bead in black. If you don't have a black bead, just use what you got. It does call for a black, but I think we could be get away with just about anything. A whole lot of the bead doesn't really show anyway. Now, the first thing we're gonna catch in is the body, and it's gonna be a rubber rib. This is a vinyl D-rib. Doesn't need to be a D-rib, but you know, if you've got it, that's fine. And I'm gonna catch it in maybe a third of the way back here. Let's see, right there because the bead isn't gonna go all the way up front. The bead is at least a full bead length back because we're putting a, a collar hackle up in front of the bead. Go ahead and catch this body in to the back where we're gonna start wrapping it. And I would say just a little bit around the bend of the hook. Now, leave your thread about the middle or well, you don't have to leave it there. That's where we're gonna stop wrapping the body. So I'm gonna just take three big open wraps and remember that it's three, so I'll back them off when I catch this off. So go ahead and spin this around, touch and turns going up. And again, I'm not worried if I have the round side or up or the flat side. Um, really, I don't think it makes a big difference at all on this pattern. Okay, that's about how far up I wanna go. I'm gonna back these three wraps off and then catch it off right here. Now it does have kind of a, a back hackle, which is a brown CDC. This is actually a dark dun kind of brown. If you've ever worked with CDC, you'll know these are short feathers, but really long fibers. And they're pretty delicate. So let's just catch a tie-in point right here. And we're gonna make maybe three, four wraps. We'll see what it looks like after we've done that. So I wanna go back just a little bit right there. Okay, now we can snip this front piece off right here. And I think I have enough to wrap this with my fingers. I mean, I've got an inch and a half or so. If not, get your hackle pliers. And it's gonna put down some really long barbs. See that? If that happens, you know, I told you it was delicate. I broke it off. We're just gonna try again. I'm just gonna catch it in right here start over. And this stem is not real thin right here, but it's just a, a delicate feather. So if you break it, just catch it in again. Let's snip this little piece off right here. And now I probably do need my hackle pliers because I don't have a whole lot to work with. Just easy wraps right here. And I'm gonna do, we'll see what three does for us. That is gonna be plenty. I don't know if that's three or maybe that was two and a half, but let's go ahead and catch it off. And that is one cool looking mess right there. So let's just pull all these back and then lay them flat or sort of flat. Keep that bead oh, a little bit uh, back. I want to be careful. But next thing we do is some ice dub and peacock color is what the recipe called for. So I've got that here and I'm not gonna need a ton of it, just enough to get me a kind of little fat thorax here. A 
All right, now wrap this up. It's gonna be a little bit fatter than that uh, CDC right there. Okay, that looks fine. Now what you could do, you could whip finish it right there, push this bead up and then, or push it back and then start your thread right in front of it. But if you're kind of lazy like me, you just put a wrap over it and don't worry about it. Several wraps behind it, make sure we've got enough room to wrap just a little bit of a Hungarian partridge up front. And here's the partridge feather I'm gonna use. Not real high quality, but it's gonna give me some long barbs coming off. So I'm gonna catch it in from the small side right here. And I'm not putting a whole lot of wraps, two or three, but I do want them the barbs coming off it to be pretty long. So let's catch that in. I'm using that stem to help secure that bead in place. Now we got this up front to get rid of. And this one, I wanna take my hackle pliers again, and then we'll just wrap, let's say, let's see what three does for us right here. Three, let's go another half. And I broke that on there, so now I have no idea how many wraps I've got on here. I guess that's probably two. Oh well, this fly's turned out to be a little bit of a mess, but that's okay, it happens to all of us. All right, so let's catch this off right here. I've got enough of this partridge, these barbs coming off. It's gonna give us a, a, a fishable fly. So we got this stem right here to take care of. Yeah, oh, that's plenty, plenty right there. So let's pull all this back and then work on our head. And the whole purpose of putting this in front of the bead is that it kind of pushes them out. It keeps them from laying too far, too flat. So they're kind of sticking out, almost like a North Country spider here. Let's go ahead and whip finish it. And we're not done. There's a little bit of cleanup I'm gonna show you here in a second. And don't do like I did and trap some of these fibers going forward. When you do, you just either have to try to push them back or pluck them out. But I think we're fine right there. Now what I'm talking about for cleanup, it looks pretty cool with that long CDC and you could trim it, but what I usually do, just pinch it with my fingernails and then pluck it right there. And I do this with my CDC elk hair caddises as well. But there you go, maybe even a little bit shorter than that, but I think we're fine with that right there. So there it is, Mike Mercer's Swing Caddis. Pretty cool little pattern, not hard to tie, and I can't wait to get out there and give it a try. So I appreciate you watching, everybody. Y'all take care, and we'll see you next time. Okay, everybody, thanks for sticking around. I did pick up an extra copy of this book to give away, so any U.S. tires out there interested in it, just leave a comment, anywhere in your comment, put the word mountains, M-O-U-N-T-A-I-N-S. On Saturday, March 9th, 2024, I'll go to the random comment picker, pick a winner. So that's it. Thanks for watching. See you in a couple days.